Hello, welcome back. This is Ariseworks Mantra Rendering Workshop. In this video, we will discuss how to get started with rendering fog, how to get started rendering clouds, create atmosphere and mood in your scenes. We will also discuss how to create interesting looking shapes uh, like cloudy text and any other arbitrary geometry and how to convert those into clouds and render them. So this is a fun one. Let's get started. Let's briefly discuss rendering of volumes and clouds. And just so you know, this will not be a super exhaustive explanation how to do this, like pirate simulations and whatever, because this is actually not uh, out of the scope of the topic of the tutorial on getting started with Mantra, because uh, to drive your pirate simulations, you have to know how to drive your pirate simulations. So that's another workshop altogether, and we will not cover it here. So. In our case, let's assume that we want to add some atmospheric um, atmospheric fog, or some might know it as atmospheric perspective. And we will add a cloud that we will create easily, or if you just happen to have clouds downloaded from somewhere, or a friend of yours gave you a cloud and said, please render this to me. You're like, okay, I got this. So let's get started with that. Now in this, um, in this situation, as you can see, I have a small scene prepared. We have the uh, the crack, the test geometry crack, which you can actually create just by pressing tab, going to CRA, and there you go. You will have exactly the same geometry I have. So, you know, you have it in your Houdini default, so this is not a problem. Then I have the area light, so just to have some lights um, uh, illuminating our objects. Then I have these super lazy and lame columns, which are basically tubes copied a bunch of times. And as you can see, nothing really interesting happening here. Just, you know, representation of columns, maybe not columns per se, but representation. And of course, I have a camera uh, that has this, I don't know, this scene kind of like in, the, in a rendering and the crack is in the middle. So let's see what we got. Shall we? I enable the IPR. And trust me, nothing interesting will happen. But we have a nice enough scene, so, you know, things are where they should be. It looks kind of okay. And we start with creating an atmospheric fog. So if you come from any other render engine, say, I don't know, Arnold or possibly Actane or you name it, they have this thing that's called, if I'm not mistaken, it's the environment fog, which is like a scene-wide toggle. But since we are in Houdini and we can generate uh, volume data and VDB data, we can just create our bounding box for the fog, and then we can make that bounding box an actual fog without making it through the whole scene. So let's do just that. I'll hold down the control, left click the box, and we have the box appearing in the middle of our uh, scene. So let's tweak it a little bit, uh, make the size much bigger. Let's see, something like this and something like this. So what we essentially have is a box that covers mm, all the, all the viewport uh, basically i'm not sure if you want to cover the box uh, the camera as well but let's try a bit more kind of like this so yeah Effect effectively what we have is a bounding box that will represent our fog next up the laziest v way of creating volume is going to volume press the volume and voila there you go that's it that was not so hard was it Okay, now we have something like everything is foggy and whatnot, so uh, predictable, but we can tweak it a bit more. So I have just deleted my materials that I had previously for testing purposes, and then we go to render view, press the render, and for now I will disable these spotlights. Okay, all we have is area lights. And obviously we cannot see anything because our fog is too dense. So I'll drag and drop the billowy smoke to the our material. 
in our material palettes to the material context. When I, then I go to objects, I go to the box object, press the render, below is smoke, because I, I cannot see which pixels are which. This is why I'm doing it like that. So next up, let's go to the density and start tweaking the density. If we decrease the density, you can start seeing that we we start seeing things, right? So our grid light starts illuminating, we see that. And it's still a bit too much, so we can lower the density. So if the density is zero, it, we will have what we had before. If the density starts to increase, naturally, um, this starts to, you know, the, the fog starts to appear, basically. All of that is pretty, pretty what would you expect a fog to, <clears throat> for a fog to um, do its thing, right? So uh, next up, I have a couple of spotlights uh, that are here. And uh, I tried to fake like illumination from from Craig's eyes, so let's see how that works. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to showcase is that the spotlights within the fog, they will uh, render the illumination, so the effect will be kind of cool, sort of like mm, laser eyes coming out from Craig, I think. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know. The point is, um, it's rendering <laughs> and the effect is there. If you think that's not cool, it's fine. You can create your own spotlights. Um, so grid light spotlights, they do work within volumes. So they can create these effects. Let me go and increase the pixel samples a bit. So the noise goes away slightly and we see the effects a bit better. All right, there we go. Okay, so what else can we do with the... Let me just shift left click outside of the box and then I re-enable our um, progressive rendering and we go back to our billowy smoke. <clears throat> so we can tweak the smoke color. Let's make it orange so it kind of looks like... Um, kind of looks like... I don't know, a scene, if you tweak it more and you make even the, let's see, uh, the area lights, let's make it kind of orange as well. So it almost replicates those atmospheric uh, light setups from Blade Runner and what have you. I mean, this does not look any anything like Blade Runner, but with more tweaking, it can become anything you want. Even maybe Blade Runner, but nah, who am I kidding? Anyway, you get the point, right? You tweak the colors of the lights, you tweak the uh, color of the smoke, and the resulting effects would be the mix of these different colors. Okay, so if you create the color of the smoke kind of dark, it starts to disappear. Uh, whites, obviously, it will be with the maximum. Um, effects of the smoke and uh, you can go to the noise tab and create um, enable the do noise tab uh, sorry toggle so what, what that will do is it will drive the noise through the through the um, fog that was kind of with the constant density and now with this noise uh, you will see you already can see that's our illumination from the from the uh, from our lights, it it looks like it's it's kind of smoke ish. It's uh, the density becomes irregular, so naturally you can increase the roughness and turbulence, as you already know from the noises. Uh, this will have drastic effects on the irregular irregularities of the smoke. Um, I don't think we see it that well, so I again go back to pixel samples and increase those. Okay, now we see that smoke is indeed irregular. So we have this, this kind of like lasers uh, going through the smoke without the constant emission power, but, oops, let me get back, okay. Um, but it has 
like the irregular effect what would you have like with the dust and smoke and any any other effect that you're going for so this is uh what you have using the noise now let's let's stop render for a second and let's switch up our our scene a bit so i will again disable those two by the way if you just drag and drop over your two lights and you disable uh, things it will disable in first light and the second light so uh, it will control both lights so that's pretty cool uh, what else um, so i disable our fog i disable our crack i make the area light back to white and i re-enable where is it okay i re-enable our clouds so disable the columns so here is our clouds it's nothing special it's just the fonts that has been poly extruded then i drop the cloud make the uniform sampling divs uh, 500 and then i drop the cloud noise tweaked a little bit here and basically what we have is well kind of funny clouds looking like a word hello i think it's kind of cute okay I'll just delete the spotlights. We don't need those. Now, if I go to render, let's go back to our material palettes and drop another billowy smoke and let's hello cloud. Let's go to out. And where is it? What's our sampling? Whoops. Oh, my bad. Let's go to out. Yeah, I think we will stick with three for now. Okay. I go to our object, go to back to our area lights, and I want the area light to be a bit more focused. So we can see the differences in our cloud, what's going on. Okay. Now I dropped the hello cloud onto our cloud to make the shader be proper, not just some, you know, evaluation of some volume data, but with actual shader. And as you can see, we already start seeing, I'll re-enable the preview render. As you can see, we start seeing our clouds. The exposure is a bit too much. Okay, this is better. So I go back to our material and now I'll go back to our uh, hello cloud. And as you might already imagine, if you start tweaking the smoke density, our clouds start to disappear. And if I um, increase the density, we have like really, really dense clouds, sort of like storm clouds and things like that. So basically this would be not as needed if you had the clouds larger. So our clouds are not very large. They're like two meters in Houdini um in houdini metering system i think so this is why to get this effect of those being dense clouds we have to increase the smoke density obviously if the object was much larger we would probably need to actually decrease the density so if you increase it like very hard you can see start like this this is becoming super super dense smoke okay I'll get back it to somewhere around two and a half, I think. And if we enable noise here, it will indeed uh, create a new noise. Again, I'll increase the turbulence and roughness and amplitude. Uh, as we already know, amplitude um, focuses and multiplies the numbers that are getting output by the amplification from zero to one by the noise from zero to one if, and if we multiply it by 10 so basically noise starts outputting from zero to 10. so this is uh, all drives the different multiplications of the density now noise in the cloud data like this does not work well enough unless you are enabling the limits of the volume limits now let's see so if we just render it like this you see that our render will take uh, roughly a minute and something but if i increase the volume limits it will skyrocket the render time because 
Uh, this takes a lot of more computation, but it starts to treat the, uh, the noise that goes through our clouds with more realism. So this is, this is useful, but again, takes a lot of time. So my suggestion would be to generate the VDB or volume data that has all the noises inside it. So you, you know, it's kind of like a trade-off. You can speed up it in one place and slow it down in another place. Depends on your, on the amounts of thousands of your CPUs that you're rendering your clouds. If you have like lots of cores, maybe just enabling the uh, the rendering limits would do the thing. If it zones, maybe actually creating the uh, volume data with all this stuff built in will be a better solution for you. So there you go. Um, this pretty much it is for our volumes. I mean, like I said, it's just an introduction. Um, it's not. It's not a course on generating dynamics and explosions and what have you. So, you know, just so you can start it uh, rendering your foggy environments and add some clouds and dust effects. So there you go. Uh, this is really fun if, um, if you have never created clouds out of anything. It's actually surprisingly, I mean, it can be as hard as you want it to be. But if you just literally generate a cloud and you have any geometry, let's say this flipper, if we pipe this into our cloud, it becomes, well, what do you expect? A volumetric data. And then if you get the cloud noise from that volumetric data, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to compute. Um, we can also see that my CPU is 98% uh, occupied. So the uh, the more powerful CPU you have, the faster the volumes will not just render, but evaluate and compute. So as you can see, we have this really cute looking cloud. I mean, it took literally seconds and it took just two nodes. It's extremely not hard. It's very easy to understand and it, it looks surprisingly great out of the box. Let's see, volume limits. We can kill the volume limit for this rendering. We don't need it, so it will evaluate much faster. So there you go. It's a, it's a cloud that looks like a, the rubber toy. So you can have pony clouds, you can have Stickman cloud, you, you can have any cloud you want actually. So there you go, rendering clouds. Kind of fun, can really bring life to your environments, be it just dust smokes, be it just like faking the particles or any other uh, things. I don't know, even maybe dust storms or whatever. You get the point, just you can uh, get any, any um, arbitrary geometry, convert it to the cloud, render it, and it will look kind of cool. So there you go. Uh, this was the clouds at volume rendering. And uh, hope you have fun with it. And see you next videos. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you don't want to miss anything else, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below. I'll try to read them all and respond if needed. With that said, have fun and have a nice day. See you in the next videos.